Hello and welcome to yet another episode of your favorite maritime program, The Master This Week, The Voice of Maritime. The Master This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's authority in charge of all of our maritime affairs. As we know, Nigeria is a coastal nation and trading internationally is a critical component as far as our economic survival is concerned. So Nimasa bears responsibility for regulating all the activities in a maritime space and for promoting all forms of participation towards ensuring that we enjoy the blessings of our ocean. My name is Ubangi Sen, and as always, I will be your guide on this voyage. Hadiza Bala Usman, Managing Director, Nigerian Ports Authority, and you're watching Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. As always, we begin with the DG's diary. What has Dr. Bashir Jabo, the Director General of Nimasa, been up to in the past week? Quite a lot, I'd say. You get to find out on the DG's diary. Besides that, we have our conversation with a stakeholder of the sea, no less a person than Barrister Margaret Oraquesi on industrial fishing. Believe it when I say to you that fishing is one of the most critical components of the entire maritime ecosystem. Why? Because 70%, and according to experts, of our protein needs is sourced from our waters. So you get to find out from no less a person than the one I call the mother of industrial fishing. Plus our other regulars as we've come to associate with the program. So if you are ready, it anchors away. Namasa's deep blue, calmer coast, and safer seas. Security is priority. The integrated national maritime surveillance and security infrastructure. Coming soon, 21st May 2021. Powered by Namasa. The Director General of NEMASA, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, played host to the Federal Road Safety Commission, Lagos State Sector Commander, Corps Commander Lushangun Ogugbemide at the agency headquarters in Lagos. In his remarks, the sector commander said that his visit was to familiarize himself with the agency as they fall under his jurisdiction and to seek ways to sustain the relationship between both agencies. Federal Road Safety Corps, I would say, is the clearing ground when it comes to activities of NEMASA and by extension MPA and other agencies that has to do with uh, maritime business. Because when the job is done on the IC and it comes to the land transports, we are the ones that have been managing the, the movement, making sure there's free movement from the Apapa corridor to other parts of the country. And you agree with me that it's not been an easy business the present content and how we can move forward. 
The court marshal stressed the need to enlist the agency drivers for continuous training to keep them abreast and updated. He also pointed out the need to have an ambulance point to take care of emergencies. I look at the terrain when I came over. That's along the corridor of this Apapa port axis. There's no ambulance points. We have what we call zebra, which is an emergency intervention unit. I know the court marshal will be willing to station one here, but if we are privileged to have an ambulance point, we have the manpower to man it. So that with the activities that is going on here, you see trucks all over. You see people that you cannot even say what can happen at any moment when it comes to issue of in, in emergency. Dr. Jamwenri's remarks thanked the sector commander for his visit and emphasized the importance of easy access to the port. You can only import and export bulk cargo through your own ports. And if you don't have easy access to the ports, road leading to the ports, then you are in trouble. So that is why we don't underestimate the importance of road safety in our own mix. Over the years, we have a number of understanding and arrangement with the road safety, and we have been seeing the success of that, uh, you know, collaborations. So we cannot say anything rather than to thank you so very much for the contributions and the understanding patient with the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency and the maritime industry at large. Dr. Jama also shares his view on how to ease the gridlock around the port corridor. Unless we have an alternative source of how we can engage those trucks and keep these trucks, we can never have peace with the issue of gridlock. That is a fact of the matter. So we must find a lasting solution. I, we thank God we are now thinking of alternative utilization of water transportation by use of barges. Now, from the use of barges, we are thinking of the rail, uh, alternative way of rail. So these are two other areas. But in a short term, that is what you are mentioning now. We have short-term plan, medium-term plan, and long-term plan. The long-term plan you have to think of expanding your own ports. Think of alternative utilizations of ports, either eastern or, west, uh, or, or uh, central ports. We have to start thinking of that. Even though the issue of security challenges are there, then we have to think of expanding also these ports, like what we have in our own original plan, to see the acceleration of these ports to other parts of either by degree or, or other areas. Another thing we may think of building bridge, utilizing the other side of the road so that we can easily move from this side of port to other side of the land usage of our own port. The sector commander sums it up this way. It's been a long lasting uh, collaboration. We've been together just like the DG said for the past 20 years. Federal Road Safety Corps and NIMASA have been a collaboration. And uh, that's the reason why I'm here, for us to sustain it. There are so many, so much area of improvements that we can come up with to assist in traffic management so that we can have a better motoring environment for Lagosians. So that's why this collaboration is quite important. And I know with my visit today, there is going to be much improvement. Former Inspector General of Police and ex-chairman of the Police Service Commission, Mr. Michael Kiro, visited the DG of Namasa, Dr. Bashir Jamo, at the agency headquarters in Lagos. Mr. Kiro congratulated Dr. Bashir Jamo and his team for their foresight and achievements, especially in the area of maritime security, in their first year in office while urging the DG to continue with the good work. The former IGP stated that he was at the agency to express his support for the effort of the agency at addressing maritime insecurity, as well as to offer useful advice and insights that will go a long way in finding lasting solutions relying on his years of experience in service. Much of his achievement must be based on his 
has uh, accumulated experience in the master. He's been in the master for a long time. So I learned the, 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 the nitty gritty of the master. I've done very well. And I wish he can keep it up. Earlier, Dr. Jamo thanked Mr. Kiro for the visit and appreciated his support so far. He reiterated his commitment to the deployment of the Deep Blue assets, which will soon be flagged off as a means to address the issue of maritime insecurity and maintain safer waterways for the benefits of all maritime stakeholders. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, Barrister Hassan Bello, has officially presented the Nigerian Ports Process Manual on Ease of Doing Business to the DG of Nemasa, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, during the working visit to the agency headquarters in Lagos. Barrister Bello acknowledged that Nemasa is a strategic agency that goes into the heart of Nigerians as the apex regulatory agency for shipping activities, which is key to Nigeria's economy. We need to strengthen collaboration on the establishment of indicative freight rates. I'm hopeful that implementation of ICTM will assist to obtain a more reliable freight rate on all routes. The MASA will be a member of the interagency committee in the implementation of ICTM. Uh, it's critical that the MASA will be uh, part of the uh, cargo tracking note, you know, when it comes. I think uh, the agency should, uh, you know, prepare to uh, succumb, actually, you know, so that NIMASA, you know, will be permanently there. To the Executive Secretary of the Shippers Council also touched on some other critical areas germane to the Nigerian shipping industry. He emphasized continuous intra-agency collaboration to promote synergy, collaboration on the establishment of freight rates, port digitalization, automation, integration, and cargo tracking notes, as well as the need for 24 hours port operations. Dr. Jamo, in his response, appreciated the Executive Secretary of the Shippers Council for his efforts in spearheading and ensuring the final production of the Port Process Manual, while also appreciating all other agencies and individuals who made inputs to the manual. When the executive secretary was talking, he was talking authoritatively with a combination of the institutional memory and institutional knowledge about the regulatory functions as well as the economic functions of the Nigerian maritime industry. So I'm glad to welcome you to your own home to your own house. I would like to inform you that NEMASA's system is being automated up to 85% uh, percent compliance. It will be recalled that the manual is a collation of various processes extracted from standard operating procedures of stakeholders in the port sector. The aim is to improve operations, service timelines, efficiency and accountability in the port sector. Namasa's deep blue, calmer coast and safer seas. Security is priority. The Integrated National Maritime Surveillance and Security Infrastructure. Coming soon, 21st May 2021. Powered by Namasa. Fish is the cheapest source of protein, okay? And we have a population of about 200 million. The fish we get from trawling, aquaculture, or what have you, Nigeria is still 
not able to provide over 70% of the required fish that is being consumed in the country. Simple arithmetic. That tells you that the growth potentials to grow in the industry is over 70%. You know. So I, we just have to get it right. There was a time we noticed that huge gap, and we appealed to the country for us to have a dedicated fishing terminal that we make it cheap for new entrants into fishing. Right now, if you are to go into fishing, three, four billion will not see you through. Because you have to get your own jetty. You will buy, of course, the trawlers. In, in the jetty, you have to have a mechanic workshop, uh, a place for AGO to be stored. Uh, all sorts of things. So we said, you can't. It's so difficult now. It's not like those good old days that uh, we could do it. Now it's impossible. So having spotted that, we advise that there should be a dedicated fishing terminal. What that means is that you have a terminal that is just all about fishing, and fishing services. So you will have somebody who is just, his own is just to put up his uh, AGO tank farm or whatever and be supplying AGO. You have a carpenter providing uh, his services. You have a mechanic person, you know. So in a, in a way, you decentralize all the activities. By doing that, you are empowering all auxiliary companies, industries that relate to fishing. You see, this is how to grow the economy. In Ghana, they have a, a, a fishing terminal. All the fishing nations, because we have been quite around, all the fishing na nations, serious fishing nations, have fishing terminal. So services become pay as you go. This is how you grow economy. This is how you put attractive place, uh, attractive things in place that we even encourage our children to come into the field. It makes it cheaper. So if you want to go into uh, trawling, all you need to do is to buy your equipment. If you are a marine engineer, and you want to provide services, have your workshop. You know, so it, it is heartbreaking that this is not going down in the ears of people that you hear. You know, I remember uh, there was a time the then uh, President Obasanjo was in power. They they gave us a dedicated area. They reserved it at Kirikiri for uh, uh, this fish terminal business. All of a sudden, we started seeing tank farms and every other thing, you know? And what do you do? You know? Because this is the only thing that can bring investors into the industry. It's the only thing that can grow industrial fishing, you know? And by the way, in this country, we don't have one tuna vessel. We all like to eat tuna. One tuna vessel we don't. To tell you how important tuna is to the world, is fished by water. You know, each country has its own quota. But we don't have. Who is taking our quota? If you have one tuna vessel, it's going to provide employment for a lot of things. Like I was telling you about the dedicated fish uh, terminal. There, there will be processing plants, you know, like this tuna. We all eat tuna now. We eat the finished products. What does that tell you? You are shipping to other countries your employment opportunities. It's an industry we should encourage. Don't see fishing as just going out there in the sea and catching. 
it earns you foreign exchange because we have the shellfish, that is the prawns, the lobster, you know, those are real money. And people prefer those products from our environment because we catch them in their natural environment. We take water analysis. There is no chemical, no anything. So it is hot cake, you know. So we do not have problem of finding markets for our products. With a little bit of added value in the other types of fish, you create employment. The activities of barge operations have come under scrutiny in the past week as there have been incidences of barge operations carried out with unlicensed and unstandardized barges manned by untrained personnel who without adherence to any safety standards in their operations. The barge ENL Superior was detained when surveyors and inspectors of the Namasa Maritime Safety, Seafarers and Standards Unit were moving around the waters and were apprehensive looking at the number of containers loaded to the size of the barge. Uh, we got the information and then we sent our men on board to detain the barge and then all the tugboats that are supposed to be part of the voyage. Today now we have come to assess the barge and check all the certificates on board all the tugboats and the badge itself. We want to be sure that the badge is registered. We also want to be sure that the tugboat is safely certificated. The safety team led by engineer Olu Aladenusi was on hand to check if every necessary safety procedure was adhered to. After a thorough check of the ANL superior documents, it was discovered that the tugboat is in class. The safety certificate and other documents were found valid. The barge is classed by ABS. The load line certificate is also valid and registered under the Nigerian flag. The tugboat personnel were questioned about the number of containers on board and it was ascertained that it has been approved by the cargo surveyors since they are all empty containers going to the Republic of Benin. They were also questioned about lashing and securing the containers and they affirmed that the guarantee surveyors are coming to properly lash the containers before they move out of the jetty. And we have gone through all their papers. They are duly registered. The tugboat is in class. The certificate of registration is valid. All documents on board were found to be valid. With necessary safety standards ascertained, ANL Superior was certified OK and in compliance with necessary regulatory standards. Welcome back. It's still Nilmasa this week, the voice of Maritime. And it's time for the DG's tweet. And it's good news all the way because Nilmasa and the Nigerian Navy in partnership with the ICC, the Interregional Coordinating Center for Maritime Activities in the Gulf of Guinea, have finally, finally nailed down that all too important framework for jointly tackling maritime insecurity and piracy within the Gulf of Guinea. And the DJ captures this aptly on his Twitter handle at Jamo Bashir. For the first time in our maritime history within the Gulf of Guinea, Nigeria, talking about Nimasa 
and Nigerian Navy, in collaboration with the ICC, will now jointly lead the effort alongside other nations to tackle piracy through a well thought out framework that will corral all capabilities. This is indeed good news because if you may have noticed in recent months, the incidence of attacks on our waters have reduced significantly, especially as we anticipate the launch of the Deep Blue Project, which is the integrated mechanism and the nation's response to the problem of piracy and attacks on our waters. That means seafarers can look forward to a great and peaceful time sailing along our coastal corridors. So, you can continue this conversation with the DJ of Nimasa. His Twitter handle hasn't changed. It is at Jamo Bashir. And the hashtags to use, yes, we now have more than one hashtag. The hashtags are the voice of maritime and hashtag deep blue. Indeed, a lot will be unfolding in the coming days, especially as we enter the month of May concerning the Deep Blue project. Remember, you can also interact with Nimasa. Our official social media handles are all displayed on your screen. And then if you're looking for information officially as to how to do business with Nimasa, say you want to register your vessel or you want information regarding regulations as to what to do, badge operators, you cannot just get out to sea and operate your badges without knowing what the requirements are and what the standards are. Go to the NIMASA website officially as displayed on your screen because NIMASA bears total responsibility for regulating the Nigerian maritime domain. Twenty first May two thousand twenty one. Powered by NIMASA. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. Remember, the sea is for all, and we are all for the sea. Till I see you next time, stay on course. My name remains Obangisian. <laughs>